long silver away. A fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, fought crime and criminals throughout the early western United States. It was his strength and courage, his unselfish devotion to the cause of right against might, that made possible the winning of the West. No greater champion of justice can be found in the pages of history. Return with us out of those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on! Three men had just finished eating in Tex Dolan's cafe at Plainfield. Two of the three were brothers, still in their early twenties. Their companion, however, was middle-aged, a well-dressed man with shrewd, kindly features. He turned to Tex, who stood beside him, and... How much do we owe you, Tex? For the three, Mr. Morley, three dollars. You at the special. Wait, let me get it, Mr. Morley. I owe a small bill here anyhow. Here, Tex, take this. It's a five. That just makes it square. Uh-huh. You want anything else? That'll be all. Well, if you change your mind, holler. Well, if you shouldn't have done that... You and Carl need your money. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> Shucks, Mr. Morley. We couldn't begin to pay you back for all the times you've stood treat, even if we tried. <laughs> yeah, very well. <laughs> What's the matter, Ralph? Huh? You was looking at Tex like you was aching to paste him one. Maybe someday I will. <laughs> what is it? Trouble between you two? Oh, it's nothing. You recollect when the sheriff closed his place for a while, don't you, Mr. Morley? Why, uh, yes, I do. Well, it was on account of Ralph. Him and Tex ain't had no use for each other since. You, Ralph? I understood Tex was closed because he'd been found selling whiskey to the Redskin. Yeah, but it was me that seen him. If there's any kind of an hombre I hate, it's one that'll take cash from engines for poison that sets him crazy. So I told the sheriff. Tex had to pay a thousand fine before he could open up again. Uh, I'm just sorry it wasn't ten thousand. Uh, it served the skunk right. Ralph, listen to me. Huh? Be careful. Tex is dangerous. If he has a grudge against you, he'll not forget it until it's paid off. You take my advice and watch out for him. And in the meantime, don't make matters worse by quarreling. Oh, I won't start nothing unless he does. You'd better not. By the way, have you boys had time to find out how your affairs stand now? Did your father leave much? Not much, Mr. Morley. Hardly anything but the house in town where we're staying. Uh, I'm sorry, but I was afraid of that. I knew he'd lost a great deal this past year. How about the bank? Anything there? No, not a dime. Nope. The only money he left us was in his cash box. I opened it yesterday. It was just a couple of hundred. I see. Well, that's the way things go. You never know what to expect. Don't feel too badly about it. <laughs> you both got your health, and I'm not sure that too much money is good for young men anyhow. <laughs> it's nice to have all the same. Yes, isn't it? 
Well, maybe I can help you in that direction. Oh, we wouldn't want to borrow anything. Oh, I didn't mean that. No? No, Ralph had something else in mind. Really, that's why I wanted to see you today. Oh, yeah. Don't quite know how to get the point. You see, I can use one of you. The wages will be good. There's the trouble. I can't use you both. Well, give it to Ralph then, Mr. Morley. I can make out all right. I ain't worried. No reason why you can make out any better than I can. Look, Mr. Morley, take Carl. <laughs> there, you see. Just how am I going to make a choice? Well, what kind of work is it? Maybe it'd fit one of us better than it would the other. Yeah. No, I don't think it would. I think either one of you could handle it. I don't get the idea. It's easy, though. It isn't, I can tell you. That's why I hesitate. It'd call for a cool head and plenty of courage. I can't afford to make a mistake. Sounds like something interesting. It is. Yeah? Well, of course you know that I've opened up production again on the old Lawanda mine. Uh-huh. I'll reduce the ore at the smelter there. I've made arrangements with the stage company to send a coach to pick up the bullion as needed. The stage will take it directly to the railroad. Well, that'll mean you'll have to watch out for holdup. Exactly the thing I have in mind. Now, two guards are going to ride that coach besides the driver. One of them will be furnished by the stage company. The other I've agreed to furnish myself. That's the job I meant. It'll be dangerous. The man I hire will be in charge. You have a great deal of responsibility. We ain't afraid of that. <laughs> I know you aren't. But that still doesn't settle my problem. Which one of you is it going to be? Well, I mean, of course, if the job appeals to you. <laughs> Why, it'd be fine. Sure, I'd like it myself. But you better take Ralph, Mr. Morley, like I said. Oh, go on it, Carl. I don't need any looking after. <laughs> <laughs> we won't quarrel about it. Let me tell you something. Don't be too anxious to give this job away. I won't forget the man who makes good on it. Well, you never can tell. Maybe before he's finished, he'll find himself in a much better position. Just keep that in mind. Then, Mr. Morley, it has to be Ralph. Didn't you know he was planning to get hitched? Steady job like that would just do him fine. Oh, is that so, Ralph? You getting married? Well, well, I have been kind of figuring on well, it. I wish you'd told me that before. There won't be so much danger that a married man shouldn't take it. And he's likely to be steadier. Uh, Carl, you don't resent that, do you? Oh, my shucks, no. If you give it to Ralph, that's just what I said to do from the first. Good. Well, Ralph, what do you say? You meant that honest, Carl? You wouldn't be mad? Gosh, no. Why, then, Mr. Morley, I'd be glad to work for Wait you. Wait a second here. Hey, what is it, Tex? We're busy. Yeah? Well, I got business here, too. Tex, what are you but Don't me? concern you, Carl. It's with your brother. Look here. Take a look at this. This the bill you just paid me with? Why? No, I... you don't. Keep your hands off it till you said whether it's yours or not. You ought to be able to tell. Well, let me see that one corner there. No, you can't. It's torn off. Well, that's mine, then. So was the one I gave you. Now, where'd you get it? Huh? What do you want to know for? Just answer up. Where'd you get it? Well, you're going to claim you don't know. Well, of course I know. I know. Uh, I'll just bet you do. You heard that, didn't you, Mr. Morley? You heard him admit it was his. Don't be a fool, man. Of course I did. Now, I'd suggest that you explain yourself. You just listen. You recollect a year ago when some crook robbed old man Veely south of town the day before he was going to pay off his crew? Yes, I remember. And you recollect why the sheriff said that the fellow that took it wouldn't dare spend it? Uh, do you, Carl? Sure. Old man Veely used to mark his cash just in case it was stolen. Each payday, he marked it different. That time, he'd put a circle on each bill in red ink. Everybody in the county was looking for somebody to try to spend cash with their markings. Oh, but what's Then just look here. A red circle. Oh, doggone right. Why, you polecat, you trying to claim I stole that money? Can you tell where you got it? I told you I could, didn't I? I found it just yesterday when I... Well? I... Go on, Ralph, tell him. No, I... I thought I remembered, but I don't. I, I guess somebody must have just given it to me when I wasn't noticed. <laughs> That's a good one. You never notice when it's got markings on it so big you can't miss. And with greenbacks in this part of the country, you're scarce as hen's teeth. <laughs> sure not. You just didn't notice. You... Or don't you dare own up. Tex, don't you dare call my brother a crook. Then why don't he talk? You heard him say he knew where he got it. If he got it from somebody else, then that fellow's a crook. Why don't he say who it was? Go on, Ralph. If you're protecting someone, don't I... do it. I'm not. Where'd you get that kind of a notion? I ain't trying to protect nobody. Then explain where the money come from. I... I just can't, Mr. Morley. Honest, I can't. I see. Mr. Morley, you don't think... Ralph, that... I've certainly never known you to do anything that was dishonest. But until this is cleared up... Huh? I think we'd better postpone any further discussion of that job I offered you. Yeah. Well, good day. I'll be getting on... If I can help in any way, please let me know. 
Wait, Mr. Morgan. <laughs> you. I'd like to break your neck. <laughs> I bet you would. But you won't. All your time's going to be took up explaining to the sheriff. <laughs> It was later in the week that the Lone Ranger learned what had happened in the cafe and told Tonto the story when he returned to their secret camp. It's being talked about all over the district, Kimasabi. Tex Dolan seeing to that. He's practically accusing young Walker of that old robbery. I've seen the boy. If he's a thief, well, if he is, Kimasabi, then I'll never again attempt to judge anyone. We help him? At least I'd like to get to the bottom of this. If he is guilty, then, of course, he should be punished. But if he isn't... He shouldn't be made to suffer from suspicion. His name should be cleared once and for all. Ah. There's one thing I heard that may have a bearing on this, but right now I don't see how it can be used. What that? The Tex hated him. Ralph once had Tex fined for selling liquor to the Indians. Tex had threatened to get even. You think him get even this way? Perhaps. Um, and Tex feller crook? Well, here's the trouble, Tonto. We know that Tex wanted revenge, and framing Ralph might have been his way of getting it. He might even have been the man who robbed Veely. It's more logical that he did than Ralph did. How that? Ralph knew Veely from boyhood. He must have known of Veely's custom. He knew Veely never drew money from the bank without marking it immediately. So Ralph would scarcely have stolen money he knew he couldn't spend. Mm, not right. But on the other hand, Tex came to Plainfield just a short while before the robbery. He might not have known of Veely's habit. Uh. In that case, he wouldn't have discovered until after the robbery that the money was useless to him. He'd have had to hide it someplace. And he could have used one of the bills to frame Ralph. Maybe that's what him do. I'd like to believe it. As I started to say, here's the trouble. Ralph identified that bill as the one he'd given Tex. He recognized it as his own. How could Tex have made a substitution? Mm, may not know. And if that can't be explained, Tato, I... Wait. What matter? I've thought of something, Kimosabe. And if it works... What that? Here, Silver. I won't explain now, Tato. It's a chance. But a chance too thin to build hope on. Where you go? To town. Stay here. If my idea works, we may clear the boy in spite of Tex. That good. Come on, Silver. I'll Silver! Away! In town, the affair was rapidly approaching a crisis. When Tex Dolan openly accused his brother of the robbery... Carl forced Ralph to accompany him to the cafe. Carl, don't wait. Shut up. We're calling that loudmouth hombre. Tex! Oh, howdy, Carl. <laughs> Catch your brother along, huh? <laughs> we were just talking about him, wasn't we, Mr. Morley? You were? And I know doggone well what you were saying. Tex, you've been shooting off your mouth too frequent of late. We don't like it. No? So what? <laughs> you gonna do your brother's fighting for him? I don't need to. <laughs> no, wait, Carl. He can do his own fighting. That's what we came here for. He's gonna make you take back everything you've been saying around town, or he's gonna knock them big buck teeth of yours down your throat. <laughs> Better let him make his own promises. <laughs> you tell it right, young fella? You think you're big enough to make me take back anything I've said? Go on, Ralph. Show the polecat. Bust him one. Look, Carla... There's been too much fuss made over this already. What good's fighting going to do? Look and teach him not to tell lies about you, can it? Now, listen, Carl. I told you in the first place I, I didn't want to come here. We'll just let the whole thing drop. Ralph, you mean you're not going to do a thing? There's no sense in it, Carl. It, it well, just I'll be, be switched. <laughs> Carl. Well? You better take your brother out of here. He's such a desperate, rip-snorting character, I'm just scared to death to be around him. <laughs> Ralph, come on. One moment. What is it, Mr. Moore? About that job we discussed. I think it'd be best if you forgot it entirely. Huh? Perhaps you've forgotten. But I thought I'd made it clear it would take a man with courage. <laughs> Curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Leaving the cafe, the two brothers mounted and rode towards their home in silence. Ralph was thoughtful. Carl was too angry to talk. But finally... Doggone it all, Ralph. Were you really scared to call Tex down? You think I was, Carl? Well, you sure acted like it. I just done what I thought was best. Best? I don't just savvy. You just made yourself look guiltier than ever. How do you figure that? Well, you stood right there in front of all them fellas and... And just the same as said you didn't want to fight because it'd make more talk. A fellow that was innocent would want to make all the talk he could. The more talk, why... Maybe the sooner folks would find out the truth and the sooner it'd be cleared. Oh. But you're acting like you figured you was guilty. I'll bet when all this started, there weren't one feller in a hundred around here that thought for one second you'd stole that cash from old man Veely. And now? There's as many think you did as think you didn't. It's all your fault. If we wasn't brothers, going by the way you act, I ain't so sure I wouldn't myself. Do you? Shucks, Ralph, you know I don't. But... But you've been making me so almighty mad. I'm, I'm right sorry for that, Carl. Oh, forget it. I don't count, but what about Morley? You heard what he said back there. And there's a fellow that's always been our friend. He'd have give you a good job, but even he's off you. You take that job, Carl. Knowing you need it to get hitched to Mary? But if I can't get it now, I'll... Oh, let's not talk about it. There's a house. Let's get some sleep. Maybe you'll think over what I've said. Maybe tomorrow you'll decide to explain to folks why you've been acting so funny. I I can't do anything different from what I have been. Well, then let's quit talking about it. Oh, boy. Who are they? Who? Who? Alan Saddle. No, I... You'll stand right there. What? Mast. Ralph. What? You're going to answer some questions. I... Now, look here, mister. Who do you think you are? What's your game? This a hold up? No. Well, then what do you... Your brother will answer my questions if I have to use force. That's a promise. Don't make trouble. That depends. What do you want to know? Ralph, I'm here as your friend. You? I don't interrupt. I don't expect you to believe that, so I won't insist on it. But you can answer my questions with no harm to yourself. First of all, I want to know exactly how you identified that Mark $5 bill as the one you had given Tex Dolan. Hey, why are you... Quiet. Well, Ralph? You've heard about that? I have. Then you ought to know. Go on. I'm waiting to hear your story. Why... Well, the bill I gave Tex to pay for the grub that day had a corner torn off it. I couldn't mistake it. But you hadn't noticed it was marked with ink? No, no, I hadn't. Think carefully before you answer this. Tex is your enemy. Is there any way in which he might have slipped that bill into your pocket before you paid him? I mean, could he have planted it on you so he'd have the chance to accuse you later? By golly, Ralph, if that's so... Sorry, Carl, but it ain't. You ought to know that yourself. When we went in the cafe that day, Tex wasn't even around. He didn't come in till later. He never come near where we were sitting till he came to collect. The barkeep? Well, same goes for him. He never came near us at all. I see. But what's now, his... one moment. Was there anything else besides the torn corner that made you recognize that bill? No. Nope. Why should there have been? Weren't that enough? Possibly. Now, suppose you tell us what this is all about. I can't for the present. When you've told me one more thing, I'll leave. I know Veely had marked that particular payroll with circles in red ink. But I want to know this. How large were the circles, and just where were they placed? Well, for size, they was just about as big as a dime. Yes? And he drawed them right square in the center, one circle in the center of each bill. Good. That's just what I wanted to know. Here, old fellow. Before I leave, I'll tell you this, Ralph. Huh? If you're innocent, the information you give me is going to help prove it. But I don't if... see what I... Adios! Can... Come on, Silver! Hail, Silver! Away! Well, doggone. Carl, what do you suppose makes a crook like him interested in this deal? Crook? Why, you blind idiot. Didn't you see that horse? Didn't you hear what he called him? And didn't that mask mean nothing to you? Huh? What do you mean? That was the Lone Ranger. Before the Lone Ranger returned to camp, he stopped at a second house near Plainfield. Oh, oh, there, Silver. Oh, boy. Oh, 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 there. This won't take but a moment, old boy. Now, wait here. A friend, Morley. Open up. Who's your... An outlaw. Inside, Morley. You're going to help me bring a thief to justice. As the sun was setting, a stranger arrived in Plainfield. He made his way directly to the cafe owned by Tex Dolan and stood at one end of the bar, some distance away from the other customers. It was the Lone Ranger, without his mask, but cleverly disguised. Tex, come here. Uh, howdy. 
you call me Tex? I did. I don't seem to place you. We met before. Does that matter? Well, you call me by name, so I thought maybe Maybe you... I know you, Tex, without having met you before. Huh? Maybe we have mutual friends who told me about you. Hey, where are you from? Never mind that. But I want to... rather not say. This is maybe you'd rather I didn't mention the friends who sent me to you. Keep your voice down. Don't worry. We can't be heard. Uh, what do you want? I may buy some supplies. <laughs> is that all? <laughs> <laughs> then I can sell you most anything you want. And not so fast. Huh? You may not want to sell. What do you mean? You may not want to take my money. Huh? <laughs> Don't talk foolish. Stranger, I'll take anybody's money. You got the cash to pay, just name what you want, and I'll see that you get it pronto. I didn't work for this money, Tex. You didn't work... Oh. <laughs> uh, I savvy. Well, who cares? And it may not be easy for you to pass it again. No? You see, it's marked. What? But on the other hand, you can have it for ten cents on the dollar. That means if I buy ten dollars worth of supplies, I pay you a hundred. Say, listen. Now, wait. Before you turn me down, remember, you'll be getting money worth on its face ten times what I'll ask. But I tell you... You're in a better position to get rid of it than I am. You can pass it off on strangers. If it's ever discovered, you can always claim you received it here during the course of business. You wouldn't even have to explain who'd given it to you. You're crowded here. No one could expect you to remember. You you think I'm a crook? I thought you told me to keep my voice down. Answer me, stranger. Tex, maybe I know you're a crook. Why, you... Maybe I learned it from our mutual friends. You... Maybe that's why they sent me here. Not so loud, stranger. Not so doggone loud. Well, that's better. Well, what do you say? Well, let me see that cash. It's paper money. I'll show you one of the bills. Yeah. It's a five. Look it over. Yeah, I'll... A red circle. Mister, just where did you get this? That's my affair. Why, you... And if you call out, I fire. Put that gun away. I guess not. No one can see it. It stays where it is until I know you're not going to betray me. Look, stranger. I... I, I couldn't ever pass this. I, I wouldn't have a chance in the world. I'd get caught. You better take that cash somewhere else. But I... Just go away and leave me alone. I'll go, Tex. But I'll be back. While I'm gone, think my proposition over. You'll get one more chance. The dirty lowdown. Bill, you watch after the bar. I've got to leave for a bit. Tex ran out of the cafe, leaped into the saddle, and rode for his home at the edge of town. When he threw open the door, he yelled for his Negro handyman. Toby! Oh, oh, oh Lord, if Mr. Tex, you gave me a start. Why, boy, you come home this time of day? Who's been in here? In here? Why, nobody, sir. Just nobody at all. I ain't seen a single soul from the time you all left or just now. Don't lie to me, you old fool. I was telling the truth, Mr. Tex, did I? Then you've been out. You left this house alone when I told you not to. No, oh, hey, Mr. Tex. I... Ah, get out of my way. Locked. Ah, that's funny. What's the matter, Mr. Tex? What for you all want to open that old trunk? Get out of here. But, Mr. Tex... Get out, you hear me? Go on outside. Get out and don't come back in again until I tell you you can. Sure, Mr. Tex. Sure, sure, sure enough. Uh, Mr. Tex. Well? Is... You really as mad as you all look? Yeah, get out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Huh. Keys. The trunk ain't unlocked. How the dickens did he get that cash? It looks like it was touched. Here's a box. Well, I'll be. The money's there, Texas. What the? You'll find all of it's there. You. Then you were Thanks. here. I marked a bill just like one of the bills you'd stolen from Veeley. To make you think I'd stolen it again from you. I knew if you were the thief, you'd do exactly this. Trick me. Yes. But you won't... Morley. Mr. Morley. Right. Yeah, and we're here too, you dirty skunk. You went around town accusing me when it was you that stole the money and you knew I wasn't guilty. Hey, wait, man, listen, I can You explain. framed Ralph because he reported your liquor sales to the Indians. I tell you, I this can This was explain. your crooked way of getting even. Don't make a move. You'll never reach that door alive. Don't, don't you. Don't, please. Then be careful. Well, Morley, you had Vili's money in his trunk. 
Is that clear, Ralph? It most certainly does. <laughs> you hear that, Ralph? Now just let somebody try and hint you're a crook. Gosh, I don't know what to think, what to say. That bill I gave Tex that time, I don't know. I think how... I have the answer to that, Ralph. Tex fooled you with a simple trick. Yeah? He was waiting for a chance at revenge. No doubt he knew just what he'd do when he got the opportunity. You gave me his opportunity. That day you paid for food at his place. Huh? How? You paid him with a torn bill. He took that bill and kept it. Then he took another $5 bill from those he'd stolen from Vili. Tore off a corner just like the corner of your bill had been torn and showed it to you. Oh, well, you don't go on. Of course, you identified it. You didn't have the slightest reason in the world for suspecting his trick. And once you'd identified the stolen $5 bill as the one you'd given him, you were trapped. Stranger, how'd you find that out? It's the only way the substitution could have been made. But I wasn't sure until just now that Tex was guilty. If he hadn't led us to the money, I'd have had to believe you were guilty after all. He did, however, and confessed his own guilt. Last you! But, Ralph... Yeah, Mr. Morley? There's one thing I don't understand. I confess I misjudged you. But why, if you weren't guilty, did you behave as though you were? Why didn't you shut Tex up? Mr. Morley, the money I paid with that day came from Pa's cash box. You see, I thought I'd given Tex a marked bill. And to clear myself, I would have had to tell where it come from. That would have made it look suspicious for Pa, even though I knew doggone well he'd never been a thief. So that's why you did it. I just didn't have no choice. I'd a heap rather that folks had suspicion me than him, so I had to keep still. You called him a coward, Molly. Yes, yes, I remember. Seems to me he showed more true courage by his silence than he could have done had he fought Tex a hundred times. Ralph, I apologize for that. Shucks, Mr. Morley, don't think nothing about that. I understand all right. You, uh... Still want to work for me? Gosh, can I? Boys, this time both of you can. Carl, you're getting that job as guard in the stage. But you promised Ralph. <laughs> Don't worry about your brother, young fella. I'll find him work. I'll find him work that pays twice as much. I owe it to him. I'll still The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.